Stravate. And welcome back to our little Bulgarian adventure. We come to you from a different room this week. Yeah, we're now in our <laughs> living room. Yes, we've moved the sofa through, we've moved the computer through, and the bedroom is now a bedroom. <laughs> so, uh, yes, we are slowly coming together with our plans. Yes, it's now a huge bedroom. Yes, and it's quite, quite, it's not cramped in here, but it's uh, fuller than it was. Yeah. <laughs> We do need a bit more furniture arranging, I feel. Yes, but so we'll uh, get round to that. It'll come. Yes. As we finish off more rooms. Yeah. So uh, this week the weather's been a little bit cooler. Um, bearing in mind it is August in Bulgaria, uh, it's not been unpleasant. No, we had some quite overcast days, which were just lovely. Yes. <laughs> After a non-stop sunshine. The clouds are quite nice when they come. Yeah, still in the late 20s most days. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and I had a bit of rain, which the garden just loves. Yeah, yeah. Um, so all that came along nicely. And on Sunday we thought we'd take the opportunity to do a bit of a harvest. Yes, we've got several plum trees around our property. And we thought, rather than just have them drop on the floor or feed the birds, we'd have some. <laughs> uh, so Max and I went out with ladders, went up into the... So Max and I went out with ladders, went up into the plum trees, this is what we picked and this is what we did with them. So we've got a harvest of plums from three of our plum trees. Uh, the plan with these now is to make them into jam. The first thing we have to do with the plums after washing them is remove the stones. So we'll work our way through it. We're planning on having a mixture of the plums from the different trees all in the jam, see how that goes. We may change our minds in the future, you know what we're like, but uh, first thing first, let's get them prepared. So we've now got the plums de-pipped. The pips are in the right hand side there, covered with water. Uh, the plums themselves are on the left hand side. We add heat, boil both saucepans, and after about 15 minutes of boiling the water with the pips, we then empty that in with the plums it adds something that helps the jam set. So let's get on and start them boiling. That's the stones being sieved so that the water goes into the juice, but the stones stay out. This helps the jam set when we put it into the jars. We now add the sugar to the mixture, that's 750 grams of sugar for one kilogram of fruit. And it all gets stirred in. So we're now just letting what will be the jam simmer. Um, it's combining the fruit juice with the sugar and we're about to do the test to see if it's at the point where it will set. We're now going to test to see if it sets by putting some on the plate and uh, hopefully it should set on there. Now usually you do this on a china plate uh, that you've had in the freezer which helps it cool down quicker. We haven't got a small china plate but as you can see it's slightly runny but it's still quite hot. As soon as that cools down that's set. So yep it looks like our jam is going to set. We're now sanitizing or sterilizing the jars, the lids and we found we have one of these um, special funnels for canning and for jar, putting stuff in jars. So we're using that as well. As soon as they've been boiled for 10 minutes, they'll be ready for us to put the jam into the jars.
So there we are, from just over two kilograms of plums, we've ended up with nine jars of plum jam. Um, we'll let you know how it is once it's set and we can test it out, but the tastings we've tried as it was cooking, it's very nice. And there it is, that's our two batches of jam. We've got the uh, darker jam at the top and the lighter at the bottom. The top one tastes just like plum jam, as you would expect. The one at the bottom is has a strange, very pleasant, marmalade-y kind of quality, um, which is good because I like marmalade and I can't get it here. So my plum jam and my plum jam stroke marmalade have worked out very well. And yes, they do taste as good as they look. Yes, the only real error we made in the process was not sterilising our jars early enough. No, it's, uh, you learn from your mistakes. Well, we've learned from this one. Yes, <laughs> realising how long it took for a big pot of water to come to the boil. And then boil for 10 minutes to sterilise the jars. So, yeah, we, <laughs> I put the darker red jam was a little bit overset. Yeah, so it's a, a little, it's not totally solid, but it's not as runny as we would have liked it. No. But mainly because we had to leave it just to a kind of simmering, simmering while we water. <laughs> waited for the huge pot of water to boil. Yes. We're more aware of that now. We are. And apparently, if it's a bit too solid, it's very nice with cheese. Yes. So, <laughs> every, every cloud. <laughs> but they both taste absolutely delicious. Yes, they're really fresh tasting and lovely. <laughs> so we're, we're happy with both of them, aren't we? And as a result of the success with the jam, Lynn went on and did some chutney. Yes, we've got our usual glut of bright yellow cherry tomatoes. Mm. So I thought I'd try a cherry tomato chutney. And it was, it's worked out, that's also worked out really well. It's quite spicy, so I think Max yeah. and Adam will like it. So our cheese board has some lovely accompaniments. <laughs> <laughs> and what else have we got round to? Well, we've carried on doing finishing touches before we move on to our next major job. Um, this week it was all about finishing off the enclosure around the boiler cupboard. Um, this is what we did. To finish off the boiler alcove, we have to put some market trobing up on the surround to the opening and a curtain. Now finished wood and market is difficult to get hold of, so I'm going to have to make it myself. So I've got this piece of wood to make the architrave out of. It's three meters long, 18 centimeters wide and two centimeters thick. Now that's plenty of wood to go round the boiler cupboard. What I've got to do is cut it down to the width I need, smooth it, sand it, cut the 45 degree angle, um, put a decorative edge on with a router, stain it, varnish it, then I can install it. So let's take you through those processes. One issue we do have here, well certainly an issue that I've found, is getting hold of wood. Um, if you want seasoned wood or kiln dried wood, so far I haven't found anywhere local that supplies that. So all the wood I get is basically first cut fairly green wood, which I then have to season myself before using. But you can also see, being a rough cut wood, the kind of finish you get. Now, this is all well and good if you're making a framework for something or something that's not going to be seen. But for a bit of decorative architrave, I need to tidy up this wood. So my next job is to sand it and uh, get it nice and smooth and in a usable state. You can see the difference between the left hand side that I haven't actually touched yet to the right hand side where it's had a bit of a, a going over with the belt sander and then a bit of touch, finishing off with the hand sander. Now that's not the finish that I'm going for but it's good enough for me to see the quality of the wood, the bits I want to use for my architrave. Um, so I'll carry on doing the rest of this plank 
and then I can decide which pieces of wood I'll actually use and which bits aren't quite up to it. Now that I've sanded the board, I now need to rip it down to five centimeter widths. I'll do that on the table saw. Um, once I've done that, I can clean the wood up a bit more and decide which pieces I'm gonna be using. I now have three pieces of wood, five centimeters across. It gives me a choice for the long and the short part of the architrave. I've got enough wood there to do two architraves if I needed to. So if I make a mistake, <laughs> the day is not lost, but I'm not looking to make a mistake. I'm looking to put, pick the best pieces of wood for the job and prepare those. So I've now routed the edge detailing onto the architrave. It's ready for cutting at 45 degrees to give me a 90 degree angle to go around the hole where, by the boiler. Um, then I can cut it to length and it'll be ready then for staining and varnishing. And that gives us a 90 degree angle. Now we'll go and dry fit it, see how much we have to shorten these lengths to give us an exact fit. Then I can trim that, stain and varnish. So that's the two pieces of architraving now stained and varnished. The next stage is to fit them in place and that'll be that job complete. So that's the architrave in place, glued up and dried. And the final step for us to do is to get the, fit the curtain. We've got to get the curtain yet, but uh, once we have the curtain, fit it in place, and that'll be the boiler enclosure complete. So that's almost our back room finished now. I've just got to find the right material for our curtain. Yep, yeah. and then we can move on to the hallway. <laughs> Finish off the cellar as well. Yeah, that's so a there are still job. <laughs> There are still jobs ongoing. On a completely different note, I have been asked to show more of the animals. Well, I've tried to get footage of the cats this week, but as you can see from these pictures, they're all fast asleep most of the time during the day. Um, they don't seem to like the hot weather. No, they spend all day sleeping everywhere. <laughs> and everywhere you turn, there's a cat sleeping yep. on something. Yeah. So as a result, here are some of the cats. Um, of course, Ziggy, just to buck the trend, has gone out today. So. Yeah. So you yeah. haven't got any of her. No. We'll try and fit her in next week. <laughs> and Dex is also enjoying the hot weather and sleeping mainly around the floor. Yes. So wherever you go, there are animals. <laughs> um, but we wouldn't have it any other way. No. <laughs> so I think as far as we've done for this week, we're probably about there. We are. So until next week, it's time to say... Stay safe. Be well. Doskoro. Doskoro.